Mars In ancient times, water flowed on the planet's surface. Still, today the red planet we know as Mars is a cold, dry world with a network of wounded valleys and extinct giant volcanoes that show up on the planet's surface. Mars is the outermost planet of the four rocky worlds in our solar system, about half the size of Earth, and like our planet, it has a distinct, distinct crust, mantle, and nucleus. Because the planet was smaller than the Earth and farther from the Sun, it also cooled earlier than the Earth. But it is speculated that the outer core of Mars is still molten. Mars orbits the Sun in an elliptical orbit, approaching 42.6 million kilometers closer to the Sun at its orbital peak. Its axis of rotation is almost the same as the Earth. The planet completes one orbital rotation at about the same time as Earth. Like Earth, the axis of rotation of Mars has an angle, for this reason, we will see various seasons during a year on Mars. Mars is made up of an iron core surrounded by a mantle of silicate rocks. The mantle was the source of Martian volcanic molten material millions of years ago. The inner core of Mars is made of hard iron, the outer core is made of molten iron, and the mantle and crust are made of silicate rocks. Mars has a thin atmosphere, most of which is composed of carbon dioxide. Atmospheric pressure on Mars is low, only 0.6% of Earth. From the surface of the planet, the atmosphere of Mars looks pink because a fog of iron oxide particles is scattered inside the atmosphere. The planet's atmosphere becomes thinner in Martian winters. During this time, the temperature drops to minus 89 degrees Celsius, and most of the carbon dioxide accumulates in the form of dry ice at the planet's poles. In the Martian atmosphere, mainly composed of carbon dioxide, there are signs of other substances such as oxygen, water vapor, and carbon monoxide. Mars' atmosphere comprises 95.3% carbon dioxide, 2.7% nitrogen, 1.7% argon, and 0.4% other gases. The average surface temperature of Mars is minus 63 degrees Celsius. Dust storms also occur on the planet based on regular seasonal patterns. Sometimes these storms have a planetary dimension. Continuous observations of spacecraft show that the planet is also experiencing daily climate change, among other things, sometimes the temperature may reach 20 degrees Celsius on a summer day. The northern hemisphere of Mars is composed mainly of low-lying volcanic regions. The southern half of the surface of Mars is higher and older, and there are more impact craters in the hemisphere that date back to 3.9 billion years ago when the asteroid was bombed. Tectonic processes have formed the bulk of the planet's surface features. The Mariner Valleys, for example, are a giant network of valleys. These valleys were created during the planet's youth due to its surface's rift. Due to Martian volcanic activity, extensive volcanoes in the Tharsis region have also developed over much of the planet's history. For this reason, almost half of the surface of Mars is covered with molten material. The dusty soil of this planet is composed of iron oxide, which has made this planet remarkable and distinctive from other planets. Ancient floodplains and a network of dried-up riverbeds are clear evidence of the enormous amounts of water that once flowed to Mars about billions of years ago when the planet was warmer than it is today. Water still exists on Mars, but only in the form of steam and ice. The steam creates a low fog and freezes quickly in the atmosphere, forming frozen morning dew. Ice is also clearly present in the polar caps, 
and images recently revealed by spacecraft show thick layers of ice in different parts of the planet that are hidden beneath the surface. From 1971 until today, many spacecrafts have been orbiting Mars. For several months in 2006, four spacecraft were orbiting the red planet simultaneously. Of all these, several spacecraft has captured images of the entire planet in unparalleled detail. Mars was the first planet to be orbited by a spacecraft. It was NASA's Mariner 9 spacecraft, and when it arrived on Mars in mid-November 1971, the entire planet was engulfed in a huge dust storm. Mariner returned nine images to Earth that helped create the first global map of Mars. In the late 1970s, NASA sent Viking 1 and 2 spacecraft to Mars, which returned thousands of images to Earth. Twenty years later, the Mars Global Surveyor was the first mission in the second phase of NASA's mission to Mars. In 2006, the spacecraft completed nine successful years in orbit around Mars. By then, the spacecraft's mineral resource mapping tool had detected signs of hematite matter. The same mineral often forms in humid conditions and in the presence of water. The orbiter also observed climate change over several seasons on Mars. These continuous observations, made with the help of spacecraft, gave us a lot of information about Mars that we now want to see together. Mariner Valleys The Mariner Valleys is a complex and massive system of valleys that cut through the surface of Mars. The complex is more than 4,000 kilometers long and covers about a quarter of the circumference of Mars. The valley is located in the equatorial south of Mars and extends almost from west to east. This set of valleys originated billions of years ago when the young surface of Mars disintegrated. In the deepest part of this complex, the deepest valley is 8 kilometers deep, and the whole complex is 700 kilometers wide in its widest part. The canyon is sometimes compared to the Grand Canyon Valley in Arizona in North America. Still, the Mariner is ten times longer and five times deeper than the Grand Canyon, and if this valley were on Earth, it would stretch across North America. Although the Grand Canyon and the Mariner Valley have similarities, the Grand Canyon is largely due to erosion caused by water currents rather than geological processes resulting from its fault. Of course, water has also played an important role in forming the Mariner Valley. When liquid water was flowing in this region of Mars in the distant past, it washed away the walls of this valley and left sediment in it. With the studies on this area, we have found out the history of volcanic and tectonic activities of the planet, and through the analysis of rocks and their erosion in this region, we have gained a view of the past of this planet. At the western end of the complex, there is a triangular area of valleys, grooves, and crevices called the Noctis Labyrinthus. The origin of this area is not known. Still, it may have formed when the adjacent volcanic area, the Tarsus area, witnessed volcanic activity. The Mariner Valley's central part consists of several independent valleys, each of which is about 100 kilometers wide. The planet's surface has collapsed in this region and is filled with layered material. For example, the bed of the eastern part of the valley is filled with volcanic or sedimentary material. The bed of this valley, surrounded by walls six kilometers high, is covered with landslide materials and structures created by wind. At the eastern end of the Mariner Valley, a turbulent surface connects the valleys to canals that once drained water from the area. Tharsis Area The Tharsis region, centered on the equator, is located to the west of the Mariner Valley and is a vast, 
plateau-shaped region with a diameter of 4,000 km and its highest point 8 km above the surface of the Northern Hemisphere. This area is covered by giant volcanoes that have been extinct for a long time. Like other volcanic areas of Mars, this region formed about 3 billion years ago, that is, when the planet was almost young, a combination of rising Martian crust and stable but scattered volcanoes over several hundred million years created this volcano. Martian Volcanoes The largest volcano we can see on the surface of Mars today is the giant Mount Olympus, the largest known volcano in the solar system. This volcano is the tallest volcano on Mars, with a height of 22 kilometers, Olympus is more than three times the height of the tallest volcanoes on Earth. With a massive 600 kilometer diameter foothill and a gentle slope at its edges, it resembles the Hawaiian volcano, but on a much larger scale. Olympus, one of the youngest volcanoes on Mars, was built following thousands of volcanic and lava eruptions and their accumulation. Mars Ice Caps Most of the water on Mars is stored in the planet's two polar ice caps. The northern cap is called Planum Boreum. This area comprises permanent hills, most of which are made of ice. This area is about 2 kilometers higher than the surrounding lands. When you look at this area from above, you can see clear wavy patterns in this area created by clear ice. With the onset of winter, ambient temperatures drop to minus 125 degrees Celsius, and as a result, carbon dioxide in the planet's atmosphere turns to fog and snow and covers the polar region up to latitudes above 65 degrees north. Six months after the end of winter, when the sun is constantly shining in the region's sky, carbon dioxide is converted from ice to gas again, and the size of the ice cap decreases. 90% of the permanent part of the cap is ice, and the rest is made of dust. At the edges of this ice cap, sloping areas attach to the cap's internal structure. The bulk of the ice cap is also made up of parallel layered structures. Radar on the Mars Reconnaissance spacecraft has scrutinized these areas. According to the data collected by this spacecraft, the lifespan of this ice cap is estimated to be nearly 4 million years. Like the northern cap, the southern cap comprises permanent ice hills. In this case, the bed of this area is formed by a thick layer of water ice, and a layer 8 meters high of carbon dioxide ice covers it. Frozen ice and carbon dioxide seasonally cover the substrate. According to measurements, this area, in the smallest case, has a diameter of 420 kilometers. At the edges of the ice cap, steep slopes connect the area to the surrounding plains, forming hundreds of square kilometers of permanent surface freezing. In this region, a mixture of ice water and Martian soil are mixed and frozen together and turned into hard rock objects. Mars Sand Dunes Martian hills and sand dunes can be found everywhere on the planet. When Mariner 9 explored the planet in 1971 and 1972, the discovery of these hills became a newsworthy and astonishing subject. In the 1970s, more of these hills were discovered by Viking spacecraft. Still, the resolution of the cameras of these early spacecraft was only to the extent that they could distinguish and classify two types of sand dunes, sharp hills and linear hills. But the high-quality images sent by the Mars Global Surveyor revealed more types of hills. Specific images were taken by the Mars Exploration Spacecraft UMR, specifically revealed more diverse structures, including wavy, moat-like structures, and other types of hills, with stunning detail. 
Many Martian hills are similar to sand dunes that form on the ground due to wind and have different shapes depending on the duration and intensity of the wind. Obstacles such as rocks also affect the accumulation of sand and the shapes it takes. Ground dunes are constantly changing shape, but Martian hills appear to have a stable structure. This may be because the Martian sand dunes formed in ancient times when Mars had a denser atmosphere, and perhaps they formed during a prolonged and calm process at the same time and during a period when Mars had a thin atmosphere. Sand dunes can often be seen in the center of impact craters. Mariner 9 first observed this phenomenon at the Proctor Crater in 1972. Images obtained from the MRO in 2009 showed that there are smaller ridges of sand next to these hills, known as waves in this and other craters. The spacecraft data and a close look at the Spirit and Opportunity rover speculated that the hills were formed from a combination of dust and basalt sand extracted from volcanic rock. One of the types of sand dunes that is often seen on Mars but is rare on Earth is linear structures that form straight lines of sand and are formed by the constant blowing of the wind in one direction. Martian Dust Storms Dust storms are common occurrences on Mars, and they can occur and continue throughout the year. Along with them, seasonal storms begin to blow on Mars. Some of these storms occur only in a specific area of the planet, while others may cover the entire planet. Hurricanes originating in Antarctica travel across the planet, creating new storms at the end of their path, eventually sinking the entire planet into dust. The Mars Global Surveyor observed the planet Mars in June 2001 in the hope that such a storm would occur. The spacecraft was able to record a local storm that quickly turned into a planetary storm in a matter of weeks. Antarctic dust storms begin when carbon dioxide ice is heated and evaporated by summer sunlight, creating rapid winds. These winds carry the dust with them and scatter them all over the planet. The spacecraft has also observed other temporary events similar to their ground samples, such as local dust storms. However, they occur up to 10 times larger than the ground samples. Dust storms affect all vehicles and spacecraft operating on or around Mars. Those in orbit around Mars will not be able to image the planet's surface, and rovers on the planet's surface, operating on energy received by solar panels, will lose their energy source. When the storm calms down, the rover's solar panels are covered in layers of dust, which reduces the sun's energy intake, reducing the robot's electricity generation and overall performance. These storms can also turn into tornadoes in some places. These rotating columns of dust may reach a height of about 10 kilometers. These tornadoes occur when atmospheric gases heat up during the day due to the surface temperature of the planet and rise. Driving on Mars By 2021, Nine NASA-owned instruments will have landed safely on Mars. Five were designed to stay in the same landing area, and the rest were designed to patrol around the landing site. The most famous rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, landed on both sides of Mars in January 2004 and, with their astonishing success, paved the way for further progress. The first rover to land on Mars was the Sojourner, which arrived in July 1997 with the Pathfinder rover. The rover was about the size of a typical home microwave oven and surveyed 16 points near the landing site. The Spirit and Opportunity rover twins were not only larger but also much more advanced. Each traveled several kilometers on Mars and stopped to conduct scientific experiments several times. 
Sojourner relied on the Pathfinder rover to perform some of his basic functions, such as communicating with Earth. But each of Mars' exploratory twins carried everything they needed. On their body was a toolbox with several different communication antennas. At the front of the two devices was a mast on top of which were navigation cameras, panoramas, and thermal radiation spectrographs. There was also a pair of warning cameras at the front and bottom of the robot to send information and alerts to anything moving in front or behind the rover. Each of the two Mars reconnaissance vehicles was sent to Mars independently and separately, and while packed in protective airbags, they made their seven-month journey to Mars. Just before entering the Martian atmosphere, the final floor and the protective membrane of the rovers were detached, and the protective shield in contact with the Martian atmosphere reduced the speed of the reconnaissance vehicle. In addition, a parachute slowed the car, and then the car's heat shield was removed, the airbags were released, and the Mars reconnaissance car reached the planet safely. Of course, the issue was not so simple. Choosing the location of the rovers was also very difficult. Scientists spent two years studying the location of the Spirit and Opportunity rovers. The landing site should not only be scientifically attractive. Still, it should also be suitable in terms of the position and height of the planet's surface so as not to jeopardize the landing operation and the continuation of the mission. On the other hand, selecting the landing operation in a low-altitude area was necessary so that the air shields that carried the rovers in could cross the atmosphere at the appropriate height to reduce their speed and land. Data from the Mars Global Surveyor and the 2001 Mars Odyssey identified a list of 155 locations to survey. Finally, the places where we could get all the necessary conditions were, the Gyuzov Crater, which was a low and flat crater and was once the bed of a lake on Mars. This point was chosen for the landing of the Spirit Rover. The other point was the flat Meridian Plateau where minerals were discovered that may have formed in the vicinity of the water. This location was chosen for the Opportunity rover landing. As soon as the scientists identified the landing sites for the two missions, they began to identify targets around the landing site within the rover's range that was suitable for further investigation. The instruments mounted on the masts of the two rovers, cameras, and thermal spectrographs, could classify rocks from great distances. Based on the data of the two rovers, the scientists chose the right places for the next stops. The Spirit and Opportunity rovers, guided by scientists and from the ground, moved cautiously at an average speed of 1 cm per second. The rovers were designed to last for 90 days on Mars but both continued to operate long after that date. The Spirit rover traveled 7.7 .7 kilometers on the surface of Mars until May 2009, when it was trapped in the sand. The Opportunity rover also failed in 2018 but by then had patrolled more than 45 kilometers on the surface of Mars. The Opportunity rover could see the edges of a crater the size of a football field 800 meters away when it looked east from its landing point on the Meridian Plateau on January 25, 2004. Scientists used Mars Global Surveyor images to study the crater, which they named Endurance. They wanted to determine if this crater contained the scientific values they needed. And can a way be found for the rover to go in and out of the crater without a problem? After much research, the scientists decided to perform this operation. The rover made its way into the Endurance Crater in June to begin its 180-day exploration of the crater. The rover remained on the slope of the crater so as not to be trapped inside the sand dunes in the center of the crater, which were 20 meters below the edge of the slope. 
Opportunity rover studies at the Endurance Crater show that the crater rock layers about 3.7 billion years ago, when Mars was warmer and wetter than it is today, due to the deposition of sedimentary rocks in and around liquid water formed. The Opportunity rover explored the Endurance Crater in December 2004, and the rover continued on its way to meet the surviving heat shield and discover for the first time a meteorite on the surface of an extraterrestrial planet. Victoria Crater After exploring the Endurance Crater in 2004, the Opportunity rover moved south. On September 26, 2006, after looking through several openings along the way, he reached a larger crater called Victoria, about 9 miles from the rover landing site. The crater of Victoria, which is the result of a meteorite hitting the surface of Mars, is about 800 meters in diameter and 70 meters deep. At the edges of this crater, precipices and bays give this crater an unusual and serrated appearance. Opportunity Rover spent about two years in and around the outer edge of the crater to find a safe way to enter the Victoria Crater. Although scientists knew that the Opportunity Rover, even before it entered the crater, actually operated on Mars 12 times longer than its 90-day mission. Eventually, they decided to send the rover deeper into the crater so that it could study the exposed older rocks on Mars. So the rover was led to the Strait of Verda, which was a six-meter groove near Duck Bay, to examine its layers before leaving the crater after a year of operation. Based on the rover's findings, it was confirmed that the rocks of this crater were formed by liquid water about 3.7 billion years ago. Gusev Crater The Gusev Crater with a diameter of 166 kilometers, formed about 3.9 billion years ago when an asteroid struck the surface of Mars. Scientists think that liquid water flowed into the crater from a groove called the Medim Valley, creating a lake in ancient times. To find evidence to support or disprove this, scientists choose the Gusev Crater, named after Russian astronomy, as the landing site for the Spirit Rover. During one of these patrols, the rover concluded that the valleys of this crater look similar. At the same time, no suitable way was found to enter the crater, and the scientists decided to take the opportunity to return to an area called Duck Bay and enter the crater. So, the scientists decided that Duck Bay, with its gentle slope of 15 to 20 degrees and clear rock bed, is a safe passage for the rover to enter the crater. So that was the path through which the Opportunity rover made its way into the crater on September 13, 2007, and two weeks later, the rover reached its first target. After studying the first panoramic image the rover sent to Earth from around its landing site, the scientists decided to send the rover to a series of seven small hills inside the Gusev crater. The hills, as a whole and individually, are named after the seven astronauts who died when the Columbia Space Shuttle returned to Earth in 2003. In August 2005, the Spirit reached the foothills of Hill and stopped several times to study the boulders. From there, it went to the home plateau, a flat plain 80 meters in diameter and located inside these hills. In May 2006, one of the rover's two front wheels failed, after which the rover was forced to move in the opposite direction, pulling on its broken wheel, and when the rover's rear wheel failed in 2009, the rover got stuck on the side of the home plateau. As expected, the Spirit rover found basalt rocks in the bed of the Gusev crater and identified the bedrock of sedimentary material formed in ancient Martian times on higher hills. Examination of the bedrock revealed that their compositions had changed over time. Based on them, 
it was found that there was a significant amount of liquid water inside the Gyuzhev crater in distant times. The Spirit rover used its expandable research arm to study rocks and soil on Mars. This arm's shoulder, elbow, and wrist joints allowed the rover to bend and position the tools mounted on it at a precise angle. Its tools started working as soon as the arm was in the right position. The abrasive stone tool, or RAT, removed the surface material to reveal its fresh material. The reason for this was those surface materials were sometimes not good for scientists to research due to climatic phenomena and exposure to the atmosphere or dust that had settled on them. Two rover spectrographs, after this stage and for the next 10 to 12 hours, took data from this section to determine the composition of the exposed rocks. Another tool was a microscopic imaging device that provided scientists with close-up views of these areas. These data allowed scientists to analyze the dimensions and shape of rock particles. The results of these studies showed that liquid water was once next to and in interaction with these rocks and changed the composition inside them. Mars Moons Mars has two moons called Phobos and Deimos. Many astronomers believe that these small, irregular-looking objects were not planets from the beginning but rather were asteroids trapped by the planet. Phobos descending orbit emphasizes that the object has been on Mars for less than 11 million years. Phobos and Deimos are locked in circular orbits orbiting Mars, meaning that, like Earth's moon, these moons always show only one hemisphere to Mars, and only one side of the planet can be seen. Phobos is bigger than Deimos. The moon is 26.8 kilometers in diameter, and once every 7 hours and 39 minutes, it orbits the planet from a distance of 9,378 kilometers. Deimos is slightly larger than half of Phobos, twice as far from the surface of Mars as Phobos, and four times as long as Phobos rotates, Deimos needs time to orbit Mars once. Observations show that Phobos orbits are getting one inch, or 2.5 centimeters, closer to Mars each year. This means that the time will finally come when the Phobos collide with Mars, or it will most likely break apart along the way. Both moons were discovered in 1877 by the American astronomer Azaf Hall. But we did not know much about them until recently. Even now, astronomers are not sure about their origin. Some think that Phobos formed from the remnants of the planet Mars and, of course, after the creation of Mars, and others think that Phobos and Deimos are both asteroids trapped by the gravity of Mars. Phobos. We know Phobos better than Deimos. Especially since the Mars Express made several close passes along the Phobos in 2010, Phobos gravity slightly deflected the spacecraft. But it was less deflected than scientists had expected. With this in mind, they concluded that Phobos was not dense enough despite their solid appearance and that there were probably holes filled with air inside it. Instead of Phobos is a large piece of rock, it appears to be a collection of destroyed rubble stacked by gravity. Deimos At 15 kilometers long, Deimos is about the size of a large city. Like many asteroids, Deimos is composed of a combination of carbon-rich rocks. This is why some scientists believe that Deimos was once an asteroid. Like Phobos, this moon has witnessed many bombardments, and its surface is covered with a layer of red regolith or, in fact, soft rock soil. The surface of Deimos is generally softer than that of Phobos, as many of its impact craters are filled with regolith. 